And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hi folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Bunny Kingdoms. Now, Bunny Kingdoms, or at least the expansion for Bunny Kingdoms, Bunny Kingdoms in the Sky. Bunny Kingdoms is great. This is an expansion that takes you off the grid, puts you up in the sky. You're making your fiefs up, the, up there with rainbow roads and chocobo, well, chocobos and other things that you might find. This is an expansion that adds a fifth player, another color, and just adds basically more stuff, including another board. I'm assuming if you're watching this, you already know how to play Bunny Kingdom. So let's get started. This is the main board that comes with the regular game, and I'm just showing you this sky board, which is placed next to it. This is what comes with the game. Comes with a bunch of tokens, comes with some money, comes with a new color of rabbit, purple, as well as uh, colors for the other rabbit, as well as these caratels, and more cards. Easy solution, you just shuffle these into the base deck. Taking a closer look at this board, you can see here that when you're playing this game, you're going to draw more cards. There's going to be more drafting per round. If you're playing with five players, then it's 10 cards per round. If you're playing with four players or two players, it's 12 cards. And with three players, 15 cards. Now, you'll notice that there are more spaces where you can place rabbits and have your fiefs up here. These are not done through a letter number grid, though. They're done through a gold cloud slash number system here. So here you see four gold clouds and a two. So four gold clouds and here is where you would place your rabbit to control that region. Now I've placed resources on here there just to show you where they go. But so many of these spaces have wondrous resources on them. And that's indicated on the card itself. So when you take control of these, you automatically get the wondrous resource or the level three castle or here the beanstalk wonders resource. That's kind of neat. If you want these wonders resources, they're up here. Now that's going to be hard. How do you connect these to the ground? Well, you can do so with the sky towers from the original game, but there are also rainbow cards. So when you have a rainbow card, what you're going to do is you're going to place a rainbow token to one of your territories in the new world, and you can keep moving that around. So you have the one rainbow token that's going to be placed up here on the board, and then the other rainbow token you will take on the main board and put it somewhere down there, and now you're connected down to the ground. So that's pretty neat, and you can then get these wondrous resources as part of your thing. Now, realize they're down here, and you have to build them up to get to them, and other players are going to be trying to stop you, but that's there. There's also chimneys. So a chimney, you can put it on a basic resource on a fief containing the chimney. So it has to be only played in the clouds. That's what the card says. But if I place a chimney on, let's say, this fish, every fief on Earth has fish. All of them. So that's pretty neat. It's a good thing they don't let you do that with the wondrous resources because that would really throw the game off. But it does. the chimney can really make your fiefs in the ground more powerful. Then there's the Caratadels. Now these look amazing. They are fives. They're better than these cities that are one, two, and three. This is five. Much cooler. When you place this in an area and your rabbit's there, you're now multiplying the resources times five. That's awesome. The disadvantage of these is you can never go over five. It's five. So if later on you connect, and oh yeah, I connected to this, now I got a three, and over here, four, is it nine? No, it's still five. So at the beginning of the game, it's pretty awesome because you're multiplying by five. But as the game goes by, you might want a number of towers that's bigger than five. But you're stuck at five. Still, I'm probably going to draft these. One new thing that the game adds are these coins. Now, what are coins for? Well, you get a coin anytime you create a district. A district is when you put two fiefs down and there are two rabbits. I mean, or there's a fief here with one rabbit, that's not a district, but as soon as there's a second rabbit, that's a district and you get a coin. There's also a couple cards that are in the deck that when you play them, you will get two coins. Now coins are going to be uh, done with another scoring phase called the trade phase. The trade phase is equal to the number of coins you have times the number of special resources, whether they're the luxury resources that you built down here or the wondrous resources that are up here. So let's say I got five coins over the course of the game and I have seven luxury resources, that's 35. That's an extra 
thing that's added plus all the scoring of my fiefs. So scores in this game are going to be consistently higher. There's also some more cards, parchments, five for each row in a great cloud where you have more territories, 20 extra points, but your trade score has to be 50 or higher. You know, collect all the cards from your fiefs in the cloud again, have one for each territory in the great cloud, so this is attracting people to go to the great cloud. Um, by the way, you can see that these cards are in the deck. They're, they're separate from the original one here because they have these little cloud tokens in the corner. And there's other things like even this, a new luxury resource that can only be played in gra grass that looks suspiciously like a chocobo, um, but just cool. There's more stuff here. This can only be played in the cloud area. I, I really like all these extra cards and they do get kind of there's only so many of them they're gonna get spread out pretty evenly amongst your big deck already everything could fit into the base box if you want it to pretty easy to throw all that in there uh, but I, I especially like the new color uh, the, the rules are pretty simple here. It is explained the different things that are in a new game. It's a really easy one to add, to throw in and play with everything involved. And I like it. So, uh, component quality, the coins, I mean, I like that there's rabbits on them and everything. They're not necessarily points. It, it just works really well. It is a little weird to say four clouds and then the third space and you have to count over. That's not quite as you know, nice and tidy as the main board is, but it does help differentiate it. You'll never get them mixed up. And there you have it. That's it. Bunny Kingdom in the Sky. I don't think this is an essential expansion. You don't need this to play the game. Bunny Kingdom was already great, but it's easy. And in fact, I taught this expansion to people who had never played Bunny Kingdom and threw everything in just to see how that would work, and they got it fine. And I also played with people who have played the base game, and they got it fine too. Now, when you first play this, the shininess of the clouds are gonna attract you. There's so many luxury resources up there, but you can't make huge fiefdoms up there per se, although you can get those five clouds, and again, the game has a drafting mechanism to allow you to stop someone from getting all the good stuff. And if someone just concentrates too much in the clouds, you can drop it on the ground and make some big fiefdoms down there. I haven't done the math yet. There is more cards that you'll be drawing over the course of the game. Probably eight more cards you'll be playing. Uh, 32 cards total. There's less than 32 cards in this expansion, so slightly the camps become more powerful in the original game because you may not have a spot that someone goes on to now. That card may not show up, but still you can get popped in this game by someone landing on top of your camp. But I found that it doesn't really affect the game that much more in that way. It makes it slightly longer because the drafting phase is two extra cards each round. That's not a problem for me. That works well. I don't know that I want to play with five, although the board now handles five, but realize it's going to feel tight, even with the upper board. In the same instance, it feels a little looser now with the extra board, but there's that, it's like a big treasure chest up here that you can all fight over. Lots of goodies involved, but don't forget the ground. There's an, also a nice balance that that trade thing is the biggest change of the game by far. It's something you can go for now. You don't get the castles and stuff, just build a lot of fiefdoms. Get a lot of, uh, you know, little two or more bunny fiefs all over the place. Get as many coins as you can. Get a few luxury resources, multiply that. You're getting that every single round. And it's just gonna naturally, because there's an extra scoring thing, it naturally makes all the scores in the game higher. So I like it. I love the colorfulness of it. I love the clouds. It has a Mario-esque theme with or Legend or Final Fantasy, I don't know what it is, you know that. It just ne is neat. It does take up a bit more table space, but overall, it's just a blast to play. The Caratadels, that's neat, you know, five. That's awesome, I wanna have something that multiplies by five. And then later on in the game, you're like, wow, I wish I could go back and maybe not put that here in my biggest kingdom. The chimneys, it's, it's all cool concepts. Again, I could easily play Bunny Kingdom without it. I don't think that you have to have this, but why not? Super fun. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. 
Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.